Okay, and it looks like it's a few minutes after the hour, so we're going to go ahead and start. I'd like to thank everyone for joining the IWIN seminar series. Today, we're going to speak about how you can empower your enterprise WAN using Cisco, IWAN, and Live Action. And so, presenting today, um, I am Paul Bateman from Cisco Systems Business Development Manager for IWAN. So, in today's WAN, there's an emerging transformation that's happening, right? The application landscape is changing from the, from the uh, traditional perspective of applications being run from the data center and being accessed in the branch locations, where now applications are sometimes distributed. They're either in the branch, they're in the cloud, or they're in the data center. And at the same time, uh, the, the traditional internet access that used to be uh, a centralized data center model is now being accessed more likely from the branch. And the things that are causing this are cloud applications, uh, use of cloud for software as a service, um, for other content, mobility, uh, guest users uh, accessing your network uh, via you know, guest Wi-Fi, and the proliferation of uh, mobile uh, data traffic. And we see that over the next five years, this, is, this trend is not going to change. In fact, it's going to continue to accelerate. And you know, at the same time, we know that our WAN budgets are remaining flat or in, sometimes, in some cases decreasing over the same time period. So Cisco's vision is to develop an uncompromised experience for uh, over any connection that you use in your WAN. So the idea is that any user will have the ability to access any application wherever that uh, application may reside. And the goal is to align your uh, infrastructure, that is to align the spend uh, on the resources that you're using in your WAN to, to uh, better uh, align with your business outcomes, right? So that your application experience uh, improves, you get much better security uh, across your WAN, while at the same time, reducing your costs and uh, greatly improving, improving IT simplicity. Cisco does this with an architecture, and the architecture is Cisco's Intelligent WAN, or IWAN. Cisco's IWAN uses the AX, uh, which is the Application Experience Enabled Router. Um, we do this. Uh, this, op this architecture incorporates four main pillars, and they include transport independence, which just means decoupling your WAN transport uh, or your WAN architecture from the underlying transport. So you'll be able to use any circuit that best suits your needs. And those circuits can be, uh, can range from your traditional MPLS circuits to, you know, to uh, broadband internet, uh, even LTE. And then Cisco employs an intelligent path control. An intelligent path control is really just about uh, policy-based based path selection. So that now that you've decoupled your architecture from uh, your underlying infrastructure, you can, um, you can now select the best path for your applications based on the availability of, of that architecture or that underlying transport. And then application optimization. So just being application aware, being able to visualize the applications, being able to identify application flows, and then being able to uh, you know, optimize the application as it goes across the flow. And then of course, secure connectivity. Uh, as we change the architecture of our WAN and move from a centralized data center model, we need to be able to manage the architecture of the security so that we don't um, so that we don't introduce new security uh, threats to our to our locations. And in fact, we can improve our security through this uh, through this architecture. So the goal is secure, reliable, uh, and high performance application experience. And as I mentioned, this, this architecture can de be deployed across uh, any type of infrastructure. And so from, if you look at this slide, you know, the traditional model is what we see on the left, right? Most of our enterprise customers had dual MPLS connections to their branches. Uh, in most cases, the second MPLS connection was never used. It was reserved for backup, uh, which is really a, a wasted uh, resource. And it, it also doesn't best suit uh, the traffic flows and the requirements of today's network. So, because we are accessing much more internet content or content that, that originates in the internet uh, in the cloud somewhere, we, you know, we want to better address that, uh, that architecture. So by providing this, this center um, architectural model, 
where you use a hybrid using maybe some existing MPLS, um, and maybe uh, direct internet access uh, circuits, we better align the infrastructure that you're using with the, with the uh, applications and content that you're trying to access. And by using the policy-based routing and, and the application-aware uh, routing that Cisco employs, you actually can improve the performance uh, that, you're use, that you're getting on your network and so that you, your user experience, your speed, uh, latency, availability, all goes, uh, goes uh, you know, improves in this architecture. And of course, we show this dual internet um, model on the right because the idea is that with Cisco's IWAN, you can actually use any, any underlying infrastructure. And we, we have many examples of customers who use a dual internet or uh, LTE and internet uh, type uh, underlying infrastructure and actually see improved performance. And so, as I mentioned, uh, you know, this architecture is deployed on a converged uh, platform in, in, Cisco's, uh, in Cisco's product line using the uh, ISR, application, -enabled, uh, application Experience Enabled Router at the branch, and using the ASR uh, 1000 Application Experience Enabled Router at large head end, at the head end and, and large branch locations. And so today, what we want to demonstrate is that all of this capability and power that you, uh, you know, that the Cisco IWAN architecture provides for you um, is really um, best realized when you have, a, uh, when you have the ability to uh, visualize the solution and to, uh, you know, in, in conjunction with an application-aware network management, um, network performance management solution. And that's exactly what live action is. In the next section, we'll go over, as Paul mentioned, live action. We'll give you an overview of what it is and give you some backgrounds, let you know what types of software challenges and IT problems that, IT, that live action solves, along with the features and capabilities, some example customers, resources, and then followed by a product demonstration, will be, which will take most of the time. So my name is Dana Matsunaga. Um, along with me is Amr Okter. Amr is a distinguished uh, TME and a two-time CCIE. Um, also with us is Tony Molinari. He's a regional sales manager. Along with him and Keith, Pars is Keith Parsons and Mark Vara. Um, Tony, Keith, and Mark will be following up with you after this meeting if you're interested to learn more about Live Action. So Live Action was founded in 2007 its corporate office is in Santa Clara, California, very close to the Cisco main headquarters. We have sales offices throughout the U.S. Tony is in the um, New York area, and Cisco is one of our major investors in our company. So with that, you get um, the agility of a small company with, with the backing of Cisco, and which is very important for us. Uh, we participate in a number of Cisco programs, the Solution Plus programs, as well as um, solution partner programs. With these programs, we have developed many major features with Cisco over the past five years. The number and the partnership has grown uh, significantly, especially recently. We have worked on features and capabilities that we can bring to you, such as QoS, um, PFR, or performance routing, also ABC, application visibility control, and also IWAN, or Intelligent WAN. Uh, we've developed these features and capabilities across a number of platforms. Um, as Paul had mentioned, there's the ISR AX as well as the ASR 1000 AX. These um, various different technologies and platforms make live action unique to be able to help your business um, run more smoothly. We can um, basically, along with the incorporation of live action into your network, provide faster WAN connections, faster cloud um, applications, basically make your infrastructure run much more smoothly with a higher availability, a higher reliability, capacity, and performance. This is true basically for um, voice and video applications across your network, whether it's your campus or across a wide area network. We can also meet the challenges of providing application visibility, especially across um, connections from your edge routers out to across your WAN. Um, live action provides capabilities to help with identifying problem areas within your WAN. 
as well as um, for the intelligent wide area network. We'll show you examples of uh, PFR and how Live Action provides that visibility within your network. Live Action also helps with um, performance baselining and capacity planning, and as well as some visibility into cybersecurity. So some example uh, customers that are using Live Action are basically some of the largest banks in the country as well as in the world, energy companies, healthcare companies, and law firms and so on. Uh, we have examples of basically major retailers as well. Some of the logos, when you go to a mall, you see these uh, various different stores, there are users of live action. We have a number of manufacturers also, manufacturers that make cars, manufacturers that make products and household goods, as well as uh, computers and printers. We have um, a number of customers that are in the K through 12 space for education, as well as colleges, and then also in the local federal uh, government, as well as the Department of um, Defense, which is where live action got started. So live action is um, an application aware network performance management tool. It um, basically has great strengths in quality of service and all of these capabilities make it ideal to support the Cisco Intelligent WAN solution. Uh, live Action makes it simpler, faster, easier to manage um, these various different applications across the Cisco network. It does that with the various different components that it has, and you'll see that during the demonstration. It has capabilities uh, for system views, dashboards, um, up-down views, as well as to be able to see NetFlow, QoS, um, LAN, routing, and IPSLA. For all of these, uh, it has the capability to monitor as well as configure. Live action is simply basically a C point, click, fix type technology. You can visualize a network, you can pinpoint problems, you can deploy and control different features within your Cisco routers and switches as well as fix issues within the network. So let's take a closer look at that, the discriminators or the reasons why our customers um, use live action, purchased it, and also um, renew it every year at a very high renewal rate compared to industry standards. Uh, first of all, with C area, basically live action provides the end-to-end -end view of your network. You can see the network holistically from one end device to another. You can see basically flows from a computer, laptop, or server going off to the internet and into um, some hosted application. The uh, circles in the left diagram are basically routers and switches, and you can see lines which are NetFlow. We'll get a better view of that during the demonstration. Live Action also shows um, through its GUI screens easy ways to diagnose problems and really spot performance issues. In this graph, it shows a time series plot, but there are other views where it shows icons, color-coded icons, red, yellow, green, so you can just spot issues and problems just uh, quickly and then to be able to do something about it. Live Action also has a number of configuration screens so you can deploy technologies such as AVC or NetFlow throughout your network. You can also deploy out um, PFR policies as well as quality of service policies. Live Action has the capability to fix problems once they are spotted. You can, many of our customers will go in and solve QS problems on the fly in order to um, provide better services to their fellow employees. So Live Action, as I mentioned, is great for Cisco Intelligent WAN. All the different capabilities that it has uh, make it ideal for integration as well as um, incorporation into a Cisco network made up of AX routers. Uh, the four pillars of IWAN are shown in this uh, slide. First of all, we have the transport independent area. Live Action provides in orange font QoS monitoring capability as well as QS configuration capability for the DMVPN tunnels. Live Action also provides capabilities to, in the intelligent path control area, it's used for PFR v3 visualization, reporting, and configuration. And in the third pillar, application optimization, Live Action provides ABC visualization, reporting, and configuration. And then the fourth pillar, secure connectivity. You can use live action to see and visualize ASA um, 
NCEL as well as ASR 1K high speed logging alerts. Here's an example of one of the main reasons why our customers as well as Cisco customers really like to incorporate uh, live action into the IWAN solution. It provides a great visibility and amazing visibility really to be able to see traffic flipping from one service provider to another. In the left side of this slide, it shows the colorful lines which are NetFlow traversing from one site to another. It shows sites here, um, San Jose to Los Angeles going across the MPLS path. And then a brownout occurs or an issue in that MPLS path. And then PFR B3 through the Cisco technology will automatically flip that traffic over to the internet path or the top path. And then you can see that happening through live action. So next what we'll do is we'll move over to the demonstration. If you like what you see during the demonstration, which I'm sure you will, you can go to www.liveaction.com slash download. You can download your own evaluation version of live action, try it out on your test network or production network. And if you um, would like to find out even more after that or just uh, have us help you with that proof of concept, feel free to contact us. So what we're looking at is live action from the home view. So as you can see, I've got groups of devices that are broken down into areas. These could be floors, groups, data centers. And as you can see, I've got multiple locations uh, through within live action for different areas of my network. So whenever we look at live action, green is good, amber is poor, and red is bad. So we can instantly see within the groups which groups are experiencing problems. So I can drill down to an example to looking at these two groups and open up these groups and we can see the actual devices. So if we take a look at live action, this is a router or a switch represented by the circle. The smaller circles inside are the actual interfaces that are on this device. So we can see this router and we can see the interfaces and notice the interfaces are showing the bandwidth inbound and outbound. The little square indicates a QoS policy is applied. So we can see that policy that's applied to that interface as well. So very easily I can look and see that I have interfaces that are having problems uh, on my network just by seeing the amber. So the lower half is output, the top half is input, so I even know it's on the output side. So as we add devices in the live action through an auto discover method, we pretty well stitch together the network. So on the enterprise side, see I've got some switches here that are connected the uh, port channel and I show those links and show them rolled up together to form the port channel. I see the links between the two here uh, over the WAN. If it's MPLS, DSL, it doesn't matter that we'll actually draw those connections and show you the uh, actual WAN links being connected over to the other devices. So from this view, we can see that just the AMBER interfaces indicate a problem that we can drill down on. Now, <clears throat> one of the things we do that's so unique within the tool is that we use flow. Uh, you we use the ability of using NetFlow to stitch together the conversations going through the network. So if we drill down and take a look at the traffic, look, the blue it indicates web, and there's 76 web conversations going through this interface right now. If we look at the voice traffic, we can see those flows going through. I can highlight those flows and create a filter to show only those flows going through the network. So we can look at the voice traffic going through end to end all the way through the network. Now I'm going to show it by DSCP markings just to show you something very interesting. Look, these two calls are in the EF class of service and that's the right class for voice. But look, we're looking at the signaling over here for best effort so we can see that we've got a problem with this one voice over IP call instantly by the traffic's running in the wrong class of service. And that's what we do this so well is the ability of being able to look at traffic uh, from one end to the other and analyze it very easily. So as we can see right now, I've got a filter set and we're looking at a group of traffic going through the network. I'm going to select one of the voice over IP calls and look 
green, green, so looking good. No interface drops, class drops, queue drops, or congestion across the cloud into an amber interface off to the source. So in the flow of traffic, we can see we have an interface that is amber. So we can double click on that interface and go to QoS and take a look. And we can see that NBAR, network-based application recognition in the Cisco router, is doing its job, showing us a breakdown by application. And at the bottom of the screen is the CBQOS MIB from the Cisco device, showing us a breakdown of the actual QOS policy. Notice the different classes that are here, and notice that voice over IP is AMBER. And AMBER is our way of saying that you're dropping traffic in that class. So we just now were able to troubleshoot a voice over IP problem down to the device to the interface, to the policy, and now to the class, and we see that those drops are occurring. I've also got a graph showing it as well, so we can see those drops at the bottom of the screen, and they're about 800K on average, it appears, to see those drops. So what we can do that's so unique is that we can actually go out and adjust the policy without going command line. So I can take corrective action on this actual policy very easily and be able to do it without any CLI intervention. Here's the actual class names, the queue settings, the reserve bandwidth, a nice pie chart at the bottom of the screen showing I've got 86% of the bandwidth available. So I'm going to go up here and allocate 1,024. Remember, we were dropping at about 800K. I still got 18% of the bandwidth, so I'm not oversubscribing. We'll preview the CLI to see the changes for change control if I need to copy them and paste them over. And then I'll save it to the device, and I'll actually modify this policy that easily. So now we'll see voice over IP go from amber back to normal, as we're seeing now. Notice everything's rolled back in report for days, weeks, and months. So we can see these drops that occur, whether they're, you know, on any type of circuit, including a PFR environment. So, you know, as we take a look, these reports also give interface bandwidth and bar comparison. Uh, so I also have drops, 95th percentile, even CPU and memory reports are all available. And this is just from the SNMP side of the reporting within the tool set. So if we go back to flow now and go to home, I wanted to show you that we can actually see an actual path is green all the way through. So green, 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 green. <clears throat> so no interface drops, no class drops, no queue drops, no congestion. So this is one of the nice things about the tool is that we can actually see this path all the way through the network. Now, just to give you an example as well, this is what PFR looks like. So we've looked at the flows on my network, and now look at the flows in a PFR environment. Now, we've got the northbound route, which is the internet, and the southbound route, which is the MPLS. So we can actually see these two routes. So looking at the color coding on the left-hand side, we can see that my telepresence data, the blue, is going over the MPLS, and we can see that my Citrix data as well, which is the AF31, which is the orange colored arrows, are going over the actual MPLS link. Now, going over the internet is my scavenger traffic, we can see, which is CS1 there, the purple, and blue, which is best effort. So you see, it's kind of the same view uh, that, that we're seeing. It's being able to monitor the traffic going over each individual link. And if there's a failover that I'll demonstrate later, we can see that actual traffic fail all over. So it's the same concept, you know, a link is a link and an interface is an interface. So as we can see right now, uh, we can actually look and see uh, the traffic going through this interface and see here's all the traffic. Here's the voice, so you see me, Citrix, and all the other traffic as well. And I want you to be aware in this example that all the traffic is blue, and blue means best effort. So we actually don't have a policy marking traffic at all. 
So I actually can go to this interface, which is closest to the source on this 2921, and I can deploy quality of service. We have built-in templates, so I have built-in templates being able to roll out quality of service, uh, including PFR that we'll look at. And also, you know, we can create policies from templates, and but I can also use the customer's existing policies or any policy that's on the device itself. So as I'm talking to the device in the background, notice I've already picked up all the other policies on these interfaces and reporting information in for them. So we can go out and select the policy I would like to apply to this interface, select the interface that I want to apply it to, input size, and click OK. And at the top of the screen where there's no policy, I actually will go out ahead and I'll deploy that set DSCP policy that easily. Now, would you like for me to set this policy on all the DMVPN connections uh, on, a, on a PFR network as an example, or on an MPLS network? Network on all the WAN connections, apply this policy to all those devices and interfaces, I can do that very easily using live action. And what does that allow? That allows for me to remain consistent with my QoS policies that are being deployed across the network. Now just to let you show real quick before we move on, I want to show you that inside the tool itself is the strength of monitoring and deploying QoS. So this is our bread and butter, uh, is being able to deploy, monitor, and analyze. So we can actually see this is that policy I just applied. There's the class name, and look, here's the match statement, see? Here's where I'm marking. So you see, you can see the class names and see what I'm classifying on very easily. And if I need to modify one, I could edit as an example and go to DSCP in bar, in bar groups, you know, for in bar two that we'll talk a little bit about if we have time, the protocol using in bar and see then I could actually just pick the protocol I wanted to use and it doesn't matter which protocol that I want. So I'll pick Skype here and add it, preview the CLI and see there's the change that I'm making to the policy in the background. So very easily we can actually go out and create new policies, you see, and see that the actual policy is applied and see that now we've got a brand new policy that I've created with a default class. I can add a class to the policy and look, we want to add a maybe your existing video class. So very easily, you see, you can build your own policy uh, using live action for deployment of PFR policies or just policies on your network in general. Very easily, I can go out and add, once again, match statements and create the policy that I need. And in the background, see, this is what we're doing. So we're actually deploying that policy. So as I deployed that policy on the interface, and we were looking before at this path that was actually oh, everything was best effort. If we refresh now, you see we can actually see the flows being red and blue. And red indicates EF traffic now for voice. So I actually can create a filter to show only this flow going through the network. And look, see, there it is. All the way through EF traffic now. So I'm actually marking my traffic all the way through the provider, through the cloud, an end-to-end -end measurement of looking at uh, traffic going all the way through. So it is the flow dynamics of being able to monitor a path through the network that makes the tool uh, very, very robust from that standpoint. If we look at a PFR environment again, and notice I've got the internet and the MPLS, I'm generating an impairment right now on the MPLS side. And what we should see, if everything's working right in the D cloud, is that I'll refresh and we'll see that traffic go from the MPLS link over to the internet and see it has. And now all my best effort traffic, my Citrix traffic, there's my orange arrow, is now went over to the internet 
because the MPLS link has failed and we can see that information being transitioned over. We see it in an alert as well, what we call a threshold crossing alert. We can see the alert occurring. We can see the class and the actual provider as well. And I provide all this in reports. So we actually do PFR reports where others don't. Between Los Angeles and San Jose, I had a problem, and I want to go out and see which applications were being affected. It was Telepresence and Citrix. Remember, we said those were running over the MPLS link. So we'll drill down again and then go look at it by service provider and just to make sure, and there it was. It is the MPLS link that's giving us trouble. Now, how are we calculating this information and getting it? Is let's go to the actual device and take a look. This is a flexible NetFlow. We'll talk a little bit about it more in a few minutes, but this is your NetFlow version 9 flows that we calculate to be able to run reports for bytes in, bytes out, packets in, packets out, applications, et cetera. But notice we support multiple flow types, and one of the flow types we support is PFR. So the PFR flows, see, are coming from this actual device, and see, there it is right there, that alert. This uh, ingress flow we're looking at, and it's a DSCPEF46. We see the packet loss, and we see the interface description. So we, as a tool, live action, are gathering these flows, and that allows us to alert and alarm, and allow you to be able to see conditions that are happening within a PFR environment. <clears throat> and where this backs up to is into the dashboard. See, here's the PFR dashboard, and you see I'm capturing the alerts from PFR now, so I can see alerts by site pair, and then site application group and service provider reports. So I can actually see, look, I like this example, a site utilization by application group, and see us being able to see that Citrix is, uh, is just really not the majority of traffic, but the scavenger is on this one particular length of Los Angeles. Also, remember that I mentioned earlier uh, down here under application group bandwidth that I ran my telepresence data on the MPLS link, but we can clearly see it's been uh, running some on MPLS and internet where it was supposed to be on MPLS. So we can double click and take a look and look, see guys, see the transitioning back and forth uh, on the network so we can actually keep track, you know, of, of uh, changes that are occurring within the actual PFR environment. So when you've got multiple locations that can flip back and forth at will, you need to have a tool that can track them and be able to alert and to alarm you so you can once again look and take corrective action if needed, but once again monitor PFR and its performance and how it's doing. In addition, speaking of the PFR flows, they also bring me back peak loss and jitter and delay. So you see by site application and even service provider, I can click and look at jitter performance of my MPLS and my internet. Now how am I pulling this off again, being able to provide this type of information? It's actually all back to those flows again from PFR. So we're first in the industry to be able to do this, to be able to monitor these actual flows and make sense of them and relate them over into reports. So if we look at flow reports and see I have a whole variety of types of reports, I want to show you that for PFR, look, we have our own group of reports that can be run. We're the only one in the industry doing this today. So we allows us to be able to have these PFR reports in detail for you to be able to look at alerts, performance, application performance, and site performance as well. So I'll turn off my, my uh, test now, and so we'll actually see the traffic fall back over in the next few minutes. <clears throat> but if we go to the home view, as you can see, we can see that traffic flowing over from one position to the other. And this is an excellent example of how PFR works in, in live action today. If we look at live action, you know, from the standpoint of being able to want to be able to troubleshoot as well, you know, I can troubleshoot any scenario. You know, if Bob called and said I'm having a problem, I can easily go out and set a filter just to monitor Bob through the network. 
So I can actually go out and put in an IP address, drill down. He says he's got a video problem, so we'll look at the video arrow, create a filter, and show just that one flow going through the network. And see, look, all the way through it's red, so it's in the EF class of service all the way through over the cloud to the endpoint. So it's in the right class of service. But look, since video stream is going through an AMBER interface again, so let's double click, take a look at QoS, and go to the bottom right corner of the screen, and sure enough, there it is. <clears throat> Interactive video was AMBER showing that it was dropping traffic. And we'll view the class statistics, and there are the drops, see? And there he is, Amber, so being able to chase him down. Now, look at NBAR and NBAR2 doing its job up here at the top of the screen. So we can actually see a breakdown by application. So that gives me a great view of being able to see applications, including proprietary applications, and how they're performing. So I could pick this voice over IP traffic and drill down and say, who's doing this traffic for voice over IP? Then I can see the users and pick a user and drill down and say, I wonder what class of service they're running in. Best effort. That's fantastic. Now we drill down again, and let's look at the flows and be able to look at those flows. Look, I can even create an ACL based off the flow. So if you were using ACLs, I could call it Folio IP, and I could actually create an ACL that can be used in quality of service to be able to classify traffic. So, and that brings up a good question of when we look at applications on, on the network as well. I want to show you from the dashboard view, this is my home network, and look, from the application view, we're doing application groupings. And this is important because now, if you talk to a customer, they may have a thousand different applications. And so most of tools like us show the top 10 and then the top 10 performance, and, but we don't really actually show the ability of being able to group that traffic together. So here's the browsing traffic, and notice the network delay and also the application delay that's going through the actual network, so we can actually see that traffic. So being able to have this view and being able to measure delay using AVC is important, but we're also looking at the browsing group. And let me show you. So if we turn around and go out and look at browsing, I'm monitoring all of these applications today. So what if I want to set a policy and want to, and want to police or want to regulate or classify the browsing traffic instead of putting HTTP in or HTTP HTTP secure and adding those individual match statements, I can now add the entire browsing statement using NBAR2. And that's even great now that I actually have that ability of saying I'm monitoring all of that traffic now or regulating it. And that's why we like the application group capability that's built into the tool. <clears throat> and that leans over uh, into being able to look at flows from the tool, from the devices itself. So if we look at an ISR G2 today, uh, we can actually see flexible net flow that's being sent from the device. So we're actually gathering that traffic and we're reporting it in and being able to have a great breakdown by application of the traffic that's going through it. So this is nice that we can use the flexible template to be able to gather this application information and to be able to show it very, very easily. But the nice thing is that we support multiple flow templates as well uh, to be able to see traffic from a, from a perspective of that other devices or other monitoring tools don't do, and that's being able to see the multiple flow templates. So as an example, I can go up to the top of the screen and go from basic flow and go to media net and notice the flows change, and now we're looking at jitter and packet loss measurement. So using the Cisco device that's in your customer's network today, we can now provide loss event and jitter measurements of every voice and video call going through their network. So using the new flexible template of PerfBond, uh, you know, we can actually have this ability of being able to monitor jitter and packet loss. And let me show you the impact this can have. 
So let's take a look at my network from a MediaNet perspective. So we'll go up and take a look at all the flows from a MediaNet perspective and draw those flows out. Look, I got a Cisco uh, IP camera sitting over here, so I'll key on that flow and do a media net flow path analysis. And what we'll do is gather the flows from multiple points in the network, and then we'll draw it out into a map. And look, on the 1811 on the right, everything looked good, but the flows hit the camera shaper policy, causing drops to occur, and there's the actual loss event on the 20. 921. So traffic was good. The camera shaper policy, we can actually see it dropped the traffic, which caused the packet loss on the 2921. Draw that out and show it to me. This is the advantage of our tool, being able to gather media net, net flow, and SNMP statistics and correlate them all in the one view to do the media net flow path analysis to be able to troubleshoot and see uh, media net issues or voice and video rather very easily. So we like using media net and also AVC. Application visibility and control now is also available in the new devices. So you, all the customers that are actually going PFR can also run AVC and actually says we can see the traffic. Here's access delay, network delay, client delay, server delay. For every TCP conversation now, I can measure performance. I don't need a probe, a tap, or a span port to be able to access this information very easily. So we can go to reports and go to AVC and see now we can inform the customer about performance issues using nothing more than the Cisco router you're providing for them today to do PFR or an ISRG2 or an ASR as an example for for AVC, but here's the Citrix performance metrics as we can see by client and server. But look, I'll make it even easier. Let's look at it for the last one hour. And as you can see, client delay is amber and server delay is blue. So we can actually see the transition and look at response time of Citrix through the network very, very easily. And in addition, Something I like else that AVC can do is HTTP host reports. See, I can bring back reports by host now using AVC, so I can see Hulu. And what about this problem? Half your network's going to www.imahackerstealingyourstuff.com, and so we can actually see that traffic as well, but they may not even be aware of due to malware or some other invasion of software on their machine. So once again, being able to see this from these reports is very valuable uh, that we actually do give quite a lot of visibility, uh, as you can see. So in addition, we do routing. So we can actually help them determine routes in their network by putting in a source and a destination address and wrap it, route it through the network so we can show that route very easily and show the return path. And also, we mentioned it earlier that we support PFR performance uh, as well as policy-based routing. Uh, if you need to do PBR uh, policy-based routes, we actually support it. So uh, we work ourselves into that arena as well as controlling ACL, configuring PFR, as well as controlling quality of service, and also controlling IPSLA. So service level agreement testing, as you can see here, as we actually can see these tests, I can set these tests up very easily using live action. So we can see these jitter tests and see which tests are running successfully and see which ones are failing. So our customers like having this as an alert or an alarm to let them know about voice issues that they're going to have on the network, as well as I can run HTTP performance tests as well with IPSLA and measure application performance and give them warnings. So, you know, we have to, once again, let the customer know of the power that's embedded in the Cisco device today that's available for them to troubleshoot. So, you know, I can click on this 1811 and set up a test very easily to be able to do jitter, 
from Fast Ethernet Zero, this interface I'm using here on the right, and where do I want to run the test to? Look, guys, I simply just go over and click on any of the green or amber interfaces, then when I click on the interface, it puts in the destination address, save to device, and once again, I just created an IPSLA test that easily. And all this information rolls up, uh, as we can see before, into our dashboard. So, you know, we can see the performance metrics and drill down and be able to analyze when problems are occurring from the dashboard perspective as well. So there's QoS, Flow, IPSLA, so all the all the pertinent information is available from a nice overview dashboard that the customer can use, including WAN PFR, as we're the only ones that are doing WAN PFR today. And last is VLAN performance. So looking at a VLAN through the network, green, 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 green. So we're looking good so far, but I'm going to go over and look at my actual backbone. And let's take a look. Going through green interfaces, we go right into an amber interface. See, port channel four is amber, and the gigabit Ethernet zero one is amber. So this actually port channel is made up of these two gig links that we're seeing right now. So we'll drill down on this link that's amber, and sure enough, input drops. So there we go, we troubleshot a global VLAN problem down to the device, down to the interface, and even can see that it's input versus output drops very easily in a matter of seconds. And on like a 6509 or a switch, we actually do layer two QoS as well. So I can look at the interfaces with Q drops that are occurring on a switch. So a lot of times customers have, they'll look at everything on their network and everything looks good, but they're still having a problem. And what happens is they're really not looking at everything. And we give them the ability of going out and looking at interfaces with Q drops. So I could look at priority Q stats, for as an example, and see, look at just voice and video, and see these interfaces are dropping traffic at the Q level, and I've never seen another tool show this before. So the last two things I'll show today as we wrap, wrap this up is um, also the ability of being able to look at VLANs, as we mentioned earlier, see it's all green, so everything looks good all the way through the network. But have anybody of you, any of you ever had to troubleshoot a spanning tree problem? So see, this is the actual spanning tree, so we actually can see the root device, the root bridge, and the links that are forwarding, and the links that are blocking. So very easily to be able to troubleshoot spanning tree, and of course we alert and alarm on everything that I've shown you here today. So a lot of people install our tool and click the audit button. And we go out and generate a report of all their QoS policies on every interface, and then we show them the issues the problems that are occurring in their network right now. So we help them troubleshoot and find problems uh, very, very easily from the tool itself. You know, from, uh, from, the, stand, from the standpoint of, uh, of looking, I can go to a network with no PFR, and I can configure PFR v3 in seven steps. I can select the master controller. I can then turn around and select my devices and add, the, add those to be configured. And then I start loading the configuration as an example. So we actually can go out and once again, deploy PFR v3 in a greenfield environment in seven steps. So I pick my hub, pick my border routers. Now I gotta create my classes. So there's my class. Voice 46, see, and you go through these seven steps, and then PFR is deployed on the network automatically. So, very easily done from within the tool. So this is a good overview, I think, of the live action and some of its functionality. I'd like to thank, uh, you know, our guest live action. Uh, live action is a, uh, you know, a tremendous partner with Cisco, and um, you know, we see tremendous value in in how live action. Um, monitors uh, performance in an IWAN architecture, and you know we appreciate once again everyone joining the call.